What's up guys, my name's Stu, and I did something that literally no one asked me to do. I made another turret build. That's right guys, I made another lazy boat, and this one might be my laziest boat yet. That's because this version focuses more on pets. I'm running this on a flight deck carrier, so it'll feature two hangar bays full of Alliance fighter squadrons. It's an anti-proton build, so that means the return of my favorite console in the game, Sentry Mode, and the addition of the console off of the Alliance Carrier, which is buffing both of those previous two. Now, let's go take a look. I'm running this version of the Lazy Boat on the Miracle Worker Flight Deck Carrier, aka the Discovery Constitution. That's the promo ship version. The CD on the Legendary version doesn't quite fit what I need for this build. I actually picked this up as my event campaign reward for this year, which is kind of funny because this wasn't even on my top 10 list for that. I wanted this ship specifically because I wanted a flight deck carrier so I could have two hangar bays and eight weapon slots. Its bridge officer seating affords me room for pretty much everything I need to stay on theme, and it's a miracle worker ship, which are great for energy weapon builds, because that gives me access to narrow sensor bands and mixed armament synergy. I also wanted to use this ship because it's absolutely gorgeous. Like I said earlier, this is an anti-proton build and also features sentry mode, so you probably already guessed that I'm using Bowel anti-proton weapons. And here they are, a bunch of Bowel Anti-Proton turrets and the Bowel Anti-Proton Omni from the Lobi store. I like Bowel weapons because of their refraction proc. When I hit an enemy, a portion of that damage will refract off of it and hit another target. And with the set bonus from the Lobi store Omni and the console, the refractions will receive a buff. They'll deal double their damage and bounce to two additional targets instead of just one. The rest of this is going to be pretty familiar as well. Up here I've got my usual setup for energy weapon builds, the colony deflector for its buffs to crit chance and crit severity, the competitive engines for the speed buff, though frankly I probably should have swapped that out because, you know, lazy boat. I'll have to look into that. Anyway, a warp core from the Fleet Spire. This is for its reduced weapons power cost, its buff to your power transfer rate, and the amp mod, and the discovery reputation shield for its damage buff against enemy shields. In the devices, energy amplifiers for the bonus damage buff to energy weapons, deuterium surplus for a speed buff, though again, not really getting much use out of speed because of sentry mode, Reactive Armor Catalyst in case I need a quick heal, Kobayashi Maru Transponder for the random buffs, and Red Matter Capacitor for the buff to my power levels. And because with 5 device slots, I'm kinda spoiled for choice. In the consoles, first is Lorca's Custom Fire Control for its buff to crit chance, weapons power setting, and shield pen. Even without its set bonuses, this is still a very powerful console. This comes from the Discovery Reputation. In the other Universal Console slot and my Tactical Console slots are a bunch of Vulnerability Locators from the Fleet Spire. These are here to buff my anti-proton damage and my crit chance. I've also got the DPRM and the Domino for their bonus damage buffs, the Assimilated Module for the crit chance and crit severity, plus my usual low-buy consoles, the Tachyo Kinetic Converter and bio -neural Infusion Circuits for more crit chance and crit severity. Also from the low-buy store, the Bao Link Sentry Coordination Matrix. This gives a nice buff to anti-proton damage plus some hull capacity, but is mainly here for the two-piece bonus with the Omni Beam, which I went over earlier. And lastly, the two main features of this build, Sentry Mode from the Bowel Sentry Ship, which allows me to summon in a bunch of Bowel Sentries that deal a bunch of anti-proton damage in every direction, at the price of being completely stationary, and Sensor Suppression Burst off of the Jerok Alliance Carrier. This is here because it gives a decent crit chance buff to myself and the whole team, but gives an even better crit chance buff to all of my pets and summons. That includes my Hangar Pets and the Bowel Sentries from Sentry Mode. The idea of combining these two consoles together was the whole inspiration for this build. Because you guys know how much I love Sentry Mode and how powerful it is, so I'm making it even more powerful by combining it with Sensor Suppression Burst. And lastly are a pair of Alliance Fighter Squadrons, also from the Jerok Carrier. These are here because their focused assault will give some nice bonus damage buffs, and because they deal anti-proton damage so they kind of fit the theme. Though I should note that them dealing anti-proton damage won't make a difference damage-wise, because Hangar Pets won't benefit from the Bowel 2-piece bonus, so they will not gain a refraction proc. For the specializations, I used my usual combo of Intel as my primary and Temporal as my secondary. Intel to gain access to Space Flanking and Temporal to gain access to Entropic Rider. Now, Space Flanking probably isn't going to be super helpful for this build given how stationary I'm going to be for most of it. However, there really aren't any better options. I considered using Command as my primary to gain access to Achilles Heal, but Achilles Heal has a 30 second lockout. That is far too long to be of any use. Miracle Worker has too much focus on healing. Pilot's definitely not going to help a build that's designed to be mostly stationary. I did consider using Temporal as my primary and Strategist as my secondary, but I was worried that continuity could screw with Sentry Mode. Plus a lot of the buffs from Strategist are also reliant on getting a heal, and I generally don't use healing bridge officer abilities. So I decided to stick with Intel on the off chance that something would show its aft arc to me. The traits are also largely my usual setup for an energy weapon build. So that's Adaptive Offense for the crit chance buff that turns into a crit severity buff and then back. 
Contact is for Kings for the bonus damage. Fleet Coordinator for the bonus damage based on my team size. Fragment of AI Tech for the energy weapon damage buff based on my control expertise. Innocuous for the crit severity buff and the reduced threat generation. Inspirational Leader for a chance to buff all my starship skills. Intel Agent Attaché to lower the cooldown of my captain's abilities. Superior Cannon Training to buff my cannons. Remember, turrets are considered cannons. Terran Targeting Systems for the crit severity buff. Unconventional Systems to lower the cooldowns of my universal consoles. And the Boimler Effect to help with the cooldowns for my bridge officers. In the Starship Traits, first is Emergency Weapon Cycle off of the Arbiter Battlecruiser. With this, every time I activate Emergency Power to Weapons, I get a reduction to my Weapons Power Cost and a buff to my Firing Cycle Haste. Overpowered and Overgun does pretty much the same thing as the last trait, except it's triggered off of Beam and Cannon Firing Modes. Next is Superior Area Denial off of the Mirror Strike Wing Escort. Every time I activate Scatter Volley or Fire at Will, my Hangar Pets will also receive both Scatter Volley and Fire at Will 1 at the same time. This is especially useful with the Alliance Hangar Pets because they have both a Beam and a Cannon weapon, so they'll be able to use both abilities provided by the Starship trait. Terran Goodbye from the Mirror Warship. Anytime I kill an enemy, I gain a buff to Crit Chance and Crit Severity that stacks up to three times. The Ruin of Our Enemies from the Discovery D7. Every time I kill an enemy, I gain a stacking bonus damage buff. And with every fifth enemy I kill, I gain a reduction to my Bridge Officer cooldowns. And Withering Barrage off of the Tier 6 Defiant, and like six other ships. With this, the duration of Cannon Scatter Volley is extended by 4 seconds, which lets me keep it active pretty much 100% of the time. For the Space Reputation traits, first I have Advanced Targeting Systems for the Crit Severity buff. Controlled Countermeasures for the bonus damage against controlled targets. Magnified Firepower for the bonus weapons damage. Precision for the Crit Chance buff, and Tyler's Duality for more Crit Chance based off my hull capacity. Next is the Bridge Officer Training. In this Lieutenant Commander Universal seat and the actual Science seat, I'm using a bunch of unconventional systems triggers. Specifically, Tractor Beam, Jam Targeting Sensors, Scramble Sensors, and Photonic Shockwave. Normally I would use Gravity Well in this Lieutenant Commander spot, but Gravity Well only has a 135 degree arc, so it doesn't fit with the Lazy Boat theme. I'm also doing something a little different with the tactical seating than I usually do on my lazy boats. In this lieutenant seat, first I'm using Fire at Will. Normally I use Beam Overload to buff my Omni Beam, but I was curious to see how Fire at Will would work with this setup. Additionally, Fire at Will will also trigger Superior Area Denial, so with this plus Cannon Scatter Volley, I'll have two triggers for it. Though honestly, that's probably overkill because Superior Area Denial already lasts like 20 seconds. The base recharge on Cannon Scatter Volley is 25 seconds, and I'm gonna get that lower with my cooldown management. I'm also using Focused Assault because I have a bit more tactical seating than I actually need. I mean, it is a universal seat, so I could change this to any of the others, but there really isn't anything from the other careers that's going to be helpful here either. It's also a command seat, but again, there really isn't anything helpful here at the Lieutenant level. I kind of wish this was on the Lieutenant Commander seat, that way I could use Call of Emergency Artillery, just because it would feed more into the pet theme, but it's not, so I'm using Focused Assault for the bonus damage buff. Since Focused Assault stacks now and all my fighter pets are also using Focused Assault, that has the potential to be a good amount of bonus damage. In the Lieutenant Commander Tactical Seat, we've got Chemocyte Lace Weaponry for some extra radiation damage with my weapons, Attack Pattern Beta for its debuff, and Scatter Volley 2 to buff my turrets because I can't fit Scatter Volley 3 on a cruiser. In the Engineering slash America Worker Seat, first we have Emergency Power to Weapons 1. This will increase the damage of my energy weapons, increase my weapons power, and trigger Emergency Weapon Cycle. Emit Unstable Warp Bubble because this is also an unconventional systems trigger. Narrow Sensor Bands 3 because it gives a bonus damage buff to my energy weapons based on the distance to my target and Mixed Armament Synergy 3. If I fire one type of weapon while this is active, it'll buff all the other types. So if this is active and I fire my Omni Beam, it'll buff all my turrets. Or if my turret fires, it'll buff my Omni Beam. In the Duty Officer seating, first is 24 or 47. This gives a chance to max out all my power levels whenever I activate a tactical ability, or a chance to buff my crit chance when I activate a Miracle Worker ability. 27 of 47 for the chance at the crit severity buff. I have no intel seating on this ship, so I'm not getting that crit chance buff. Vincent Kish, a Space Warfare Specialist with a unique ability, activating a level 1 or 2 firing mode has a chance to be increased to the next level. So with this guy, I have a 25% chance to increase my Scatter Volley 2 to a Scatter Volley 3, and Fire at Will 1 to Fire at Will 2. Next are a couple of Energy Weapon Officers to help increase my Crit Chance and Crit Severity, and 39 of 47 to help with the cooldown of my Tactical and Miracle Worker Bridge Officer abilities. Now, normally this is the part where I show you the build in action in ISE, but today we're going to do something a little different. You guys have seen me do ISE a bunch of different times, you guys know how it goes. Kill the opening group, kill the transformer on the left, kill the transformer on the right, kill the gate, and kill the cube, and try not to leave any trash. But because this build is reliant on sentry mode, and because ISE requires a lot of moving in the beginning, I can't really use sentry mode until the final run on the gate. So while I did parse this build in an ISE just to get a benchmark for its DPS, which I will go over the combat log for in a bit, 
I wanted to show off this build in a situation that shows why I actually like this type of build. So instead of ISE, I recorded a run of Draenor Gauntlet. In that TFO, if you sit just in the right spot, you can park sentry mode between two of the enemy spawn points and basically turn Stowe into a tower defense game.
Now, this is the parts from the ISE run, in which I did almost 327k, which is pretty impressive for one of my turret builds. Though I once again have to give the Augie disclaimer, meaning I probably would have done better if Augie wasn't in this group hogging all the DPS. Fun fact, he did that 1.5 mil on accident. Only Augie, man. Nah, what happened was he was using Recursive Shearing 3, someone else was using Agony Redistributor, and when we recorded this ISE, there were still some weird interactions going on between those two. Though I think that's been fixed now. In the player analysis, you can see that Scatter Volley did the bulk of my damage, with Scatter Volley 2 doing over 76k, and Scatter Volley 3 doing 59k. That's not bad for only having a 25% chance of having Scatter Volley 3. Chained Anti-Proton Destruction is actually from the Bottle Sentries, so that means even though Sentry Mode is only up during the last portion of the TFO, it still did a large chunk of my total damage. It actually really makes me want to test out an ISE in a different way. Instead of doing the usual middle, left, right, middle runs, I'm kind of curious to see what happens if I just sit in Sentry Mode in front of the gateway the whole time, but don't go in with a control build. Instead, I would sit there in front of the gate in Sentry Mode and kill everything with my Bouncing Bowl Destruction. It probably wouldn't actually perform that well numbers-wise, because a lot of your DPS comes from those Transformers soaking up your damage output, but I still think it would be a fun thing to try. My pets did about 41k, in this case that's mostly just the Alliance Fighters. 38k from them is pretty nice. A lot of that is Superior Area Denial paired with the Jerox console. And the last thing I wanted to point out is Fire at Will, which did about 6k total, which is actually kind of disappointing. Though I guess I really shouldn't be that surprised, it's just one Omni. I'm probably going to switch that back to Beam Overload. Yeah, that is my laziest lazy boat to date. I hope you guys got a kick out of it. Of all the lazy boats that I've done so far, and I've done a few, this one is definitely my favorite. Probably because I've been on such a big carrier kick lately. Anyway, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I know, every time, but it's YouTube, it really does help the channel and I do appreciate it. My name's Stu, and I'll see you guys next time.